If you have a Teledyne Lars Mini Therm 2, and this is the JVT, meaning it has a constant pilot, so the pilot is always on, or it should be on at least if that's out. That's probably your problem right there. I'm going to kind of troubleshoot this or run through what you can check because it took me two days to figure out what my problem was, why the boiler wasn't firing even though the pilot was on. And I'm not a, you know, <laughs> I'm not a repair guy, not an electrician, not a plumber. Just a lot of reading and, and trial and error until I figured it out. So I thought I would share my findings with you. Okay, so you got this guy. You're gonna to wanna to undo some screws to get your control panel cover off. There's one here and one on the other side. So take those off. That will allow you to remove this. And on the inside, you'll see a wiring diagram. And here's the model JVT on this one. That's what it looks like on the inside. And same thing with underneath. You can um, take off the burner cover here. Mine just sits on there. Kind of careful when you're removing it though, there's a switch over here, which should be one of the first things you check, but I'll, I'll show you that in a second. So let's get this off without tripping that. There we go. So you're gonna wanna make sure you don't stretch those wires. If you d disconnect one of these, it's not gonna fire. Cause this is kind of an over burn or overflow uh, switch. So that's uh, popped up. You're gonna need to pop that down. Uh, the reason for that is because it's uh, flip it this way. It's a little heating a sensor, so it senses heat. So if the main burner comes on and it starts backdrafting and and heading towards this grate, there's something wrong. Probably uh, plugged uh, vent. So it needs to turn off. Otherwise, you're gonna you know, cause a lot of damage or gas yourself out. So that'll trip this, and this is your manual reset, um, and you've got to push that down. If either one of these are disconnected or there's not continuity between them, uh, then your main boiler is not going to fire. Similarly, on the back, uh, now this is a Canadian model, so there is not an automatic damper. Uh, a lot of models have, especially newer ones, this is an old one from 96, will have a motor that will open and close uh, the flue or the vent. This one does not have that, it's constantly open. You'll find another one of the switches back here. Right, and again, you're gonna wanna make sure that is pushed in and uh, there's continuity between the two of those. Uh, you know, an easy way to bypass this switch is you pop them off and put a little fuse, a mini fuse in between the two. Here, I'll grab one and I'll show you what I mean. Okay, by mini fuse, I mean something like this. Just take a little automotive fuse, um, stick one of the, the prongs in each side so that completes the circuit. Because these switches, all they're doing is disrupting the circuit. So if it trips, it pops it up and there's no continuity between those anymore. So by doing this, you can bypass it. It's a good, if you're troubleshooting a unit, I suggest you do this because then you can check on the back of this with the tester to make sure those little prongs there that uh, the fuse is good and there's continuity between these two wires. So do that on the front and the back. Next, there's one other place you're gonna wanna check and turned out this was my problem. It took me a long time to find this because it was buried. Typically it's not out in the front. I pulled it out to the front, but it's kind of hiding back here as an inline fuse. And I popped it out right now because this was the problem. It's a, where did I put it? Okay, this is a B-U-S-S-M-D-L-2. So a bus MDL-2. And on this side, it'll say it's 250 volts, but it's only a two amp. That's what the two stands for. order some of these. I went to Home Depot, couldn't find them. So my friend Amazon, Uncle Bezos has some, so I'll order that. Um, right, in, and how I, I basically bypassed it is you can put any kind of thick wire in there, but I, I wanted to be a bit safer. So I found an inline fuse, which I had from an automotive um, purpose, and it's a 15 amp. 
And at least on my circuit breaker for this boiler, it's a 15 amp uh, breaker. Uh, so I, I, I added a little end here, All right? So you can take this off, put this one on, right? Jam it into the other end here. Now, before you go, you know, messing around with twist the wires, you probably want to turn your power off to it. But you'll need the power on and you'll need um, the thermostat on so it's calling heat. So you can start testing with your uh, voltmeter what could possibly be wrong. Because in investigating, pretty much I, this was the last thing I checked, of course. It took me two days to get to this point to find this little inline fuse. But, you know, there's always some learnings to be had. So in reading up on it and looking at the manual of this, I discovered a few things. One of them being, right, if you come up to wherever your switch for the boiler is, you're gonna have a transformer. So that's a 24 volt transformer. I don't know if I can do this with one hand. Really. Okay, got a clip back on the alligator clips. So this transformer, which is drawing power from a switch here. Uh, so if you wanna kill power to the whole system, you literally turn that switch and you'll get uh, zero. So the first thing you're gonna to wanna to check is the transformer, because if you're reading zero, a um, couple things. I guess three things it could be is your transformer is burnt out. Happens quite a bit in my readings. Uh, the switch is turned off. Maybe someone bumped it or was working on it. Or your actual 15 amp or whatever amp you have for your boiler is switched on your um, on your circuit panel. All right, the guy that looks like like this. So in my case, it's the 15 amp up here. So if that was flipped, you can kill the power to it as well. So make sure that's on. Okay, so going back to this guy, uh, we have power. And it's more than the 24 volts it needs, so that's not the issue. Uh, then we're going to trace that to some red wires here. Do, 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 do. And they all end up at your, in my case, it's a Honeywell home zone valve. So if you have to Google that, Google... A zone valve or home zone or Honeywell home zone and its purpose is to when the, when there's a call for heat uh, it drives a motor which moves a little plunger down here and will push in this little tiny um, button which is on what's called an end switch these often go bad as well so you're gonna to wanna to Google that so you understand what that's called or if you need the parts for that. So I ended up out of focus here. So we have the motor, which comes off. In my case, there's only one screw. So I did take it right off uh, to confirm. When you turn on the thermostat, this should be moving. So assuming you have power and you have power to your uh, transformer and you go turn on your thermostat so there's a call for heat, this is gonna move back and forth and I'll go do that now so you see what it looks like. Okay, so what's gonna happen when you flip your thermostat and you hear that little click? It's gonna turn on the motor and slowly move that little lever. To push on your end switch. And that completes the circuit which then is supposed to tell the boiler to turn on. Now, of course, I don't have my fuse in there, even my temporary fuse. So this is pretty much what it was doing. I've turned the thermostat on, I can see the motor moving, nothing, nothing comes on. But I know the motor has power and the um, transformer has power, right? So you just carry on your investigation of what is the the actual problem. So we'll leave all this stuff on. So be careful because there is live power, at least 24 volts uh, running through the system. Uh, because again, this is on and I have the thermostat set to call for, for heat. There's a few, oh, let me disconnect this here, hang on. And I think I'll switch back to the little, to the little probes. <laughs> Okay, so there's a few places you're gonna to wanna to check for your 24 volts. And first one being uh, these red and yellow wires. Uh, I think this is called the transistor 
or transformer. Not sure it's another transformer. This is your pump relay, I know that much. Uh, so between these two, you should have power. So we're gonna test that now. Again, sorry for uh, the Blair Witch Project here. Okay, so I have 27.6 and you'll remember at the top there is 28 and I only need 24. So I have power to both of these, which is good. Um, so then I moved to, do I have power at this guy? And I connected them and I do. And you're also gonna wanna check if you have power on your gas pump or valve, sorry, not a pump, it's a valve. Uh, it's kind of tricky to get it in there. So what I suggest you do is remove your yellow wire, which again comes from over here. Now you'll notice we had power here, so there should be power to this cable, right? Um, so check that, so pull it off, it just kind of comes off like this. Ta-da, right? And I know there is power to it because I checked it, so you have to trust me on that. It's supplying power to this guy. So if there's power here, it should be going to your brown wire. Again, this is on your gas valve. And why that is important is you're then gonna move to, yeah, get that back in there. Where is it? On the cover. For your burners is you have an overrun or an overflow switch, lots of different names for it, uh, which looks like that. My switches now are just bypassed because I didn't know if the switch was the problem. So I just took a little tiny mini fuse to join them together. All you want to do is connect them so that it, it continues the circuit. So the, you know, the circuit continues on. So in this particular Mini Therm 2, I have two switches, both of which could have been causing my problem. Uh, for the longest time I thought they were, but after testing and bypassing them, again I bypass this one with another little mini fuse, not the problem. So if we trace this back to, okay, we have power here, we got power to we got power down here. Um, when you get to the relay itself, right? Because this was connecting into here while the fuse was in there, right? This was running up to this red one. I was not getting power to here, to the, um, to the relay. Uh, therefore, my burner wasn't turning on. Other things you can check, which die quite frequently, is the, um, the thermostat. There's a couple thermostats on this one. There's this high-low guy over here and there's another one up here. Don't ask me what they're called. Oh, sorry, that's my multimeter. These cables over here, which are your, uh, your red and white, right? That's your thermostat call. If there's voltage across there, like it'll be a little tiny amounts like 0.2 or 0.3, that's not what you want. You want a continuous circuit if it's on. So when it's off, Yes, there won't be a circuit and there'll be a little bit, tiny bit of voltage. So you can just jumper those two if you think your thermostat's the issue or there's something funny going on up here with your home valve. Because you'll notice the, ow, the wiring for it is kind of complex. Right, so these are running from the boiler and they're connecting to your end switch. So there's the third switch kind of in this equation that if this guy's bad, it won't con you know con like uh, make a continuous circuit. So what you can do is you can take these apart, join these little two wires together because they're just coming from your boiler and that will bypass your end switch. Uh, what else have I learned that I can tell you? Mm. Okay, so my thermostat is off, off, off. I'm going to turn on the heat, the heat here. You'll hear it click. And it is worth taking this off to ensure that those two wires, in my case, the two wires are firmly, um, you know, screwed down because that is another potential uh, fault is your thermostat. 
Actually, I might as well just show you what I mean by this. So this is held on uh, by a couple of clips here at the top of the bottom. And mine has two wires. Uh, I did make sure they're firmly seated in there. You can put either a jumper or just unscrew them and join them together, uh, which will complete the circuit. That's about it, pretty much. I know it's been a long rambling uh, video already. I do apologize for that. Again, I'm not an electrician, I'm not a plumber. It took me two days of kind of screwing around with this to figure out. At the end of the day, my issue was with an inline fuse. Um, so I hope that helps somebody.